Hey, welcome to 16-Bit Bench. Matt here. Someone has sent me in a original Xbox DVD drive isn't running. What I wanted to do was figure out what the problem is. This is going to be a real quick video. We're going to get straight to the point. Okay, if you if you need to know how to how to open up your Xbox, check iFixit. Just Google original Xbox how how to dismantle. It's really easy. Six screws, some torque screws to get the DVD drive out. I'm not going to cover that here. What I'm going to cover is uh, what we need to do. For the laser so in order to open the dvd drive there's four screws on the bottom and that takes the bottom panel straight off flip it back over and remove the upper panel now i've already taken this machine apart and i've cleaned clean the laser if you want to know how to clean the laser you get some of this stuff isopropanol okay either in a spray or in a bottle and one of these guys and you just gently clean any muck off there so this is a samsung toshiba uh sdg 605 but a lot of the drives are called sdg sdg 605 so this number up here is bullshit this number is the number you probably need to ident identify the actual drive model that you've got um so this is the laser and somewhere on your laser there will be an adjustment potentiometer Okay, on this one, it's behind this blue ribbon cable. But on other models, you might find them on the back here. They could be anywhere. And what we're going to do is measure the resistance of that potentiometer, and then we're going to adjust that resistance down. Okay, because what we want to do is increase the power flow to the laser. Now, this, this applies to any, any laser tweak, all right? You, the problem that with the laser is it may not be getting enough power because it's aged over time. So what we're gonna do is measure the value of the resistor in line with the laser, and then we're gonna turn it down. And by turning it down, we turn the power up, all right? And that's how you get your laser to be a bit more powerful. Unfortunately, what you're also doing is you're shortening the life of that laser diode. It's gonna die quicker, but it's dying anyway, and we can't get a replacement drive, so this is the best option. Get a multimeter, here's one. And what we're gonna do is turn to our resistance gauge and we're gonna measure the resistance of that potentiometer. So let's see how I can get to it. What I'm gonna to need to do is just pop the board off so I can actually get to the pot. And that's really easy. There's no screws inside here. It's all held in with clips. Also, if you're swapping the drives, you need to swap the boards as well. That's a, that's a different problem. We're not really gonna talk about that today. Um, okay, so now I can get to the pot. What I need to do is uh, measure the resistance on that. 1.1 ohms on one leg and okay 1.5k that seems more reasonable so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that you see it's 1.5k now i'm going to take that down to about 1.25k um and then i'm going to test my laser again so the tricky part is trying to adjust it so right now i'm turning it uh anti-clockwise and i'll measure it again okay and we're, we've gone up yeah, 2.13. So it's about, it was about 10 degrees the wrong direction and we went up 20%. So what I need to go is 20 degrees the other direction. 1.4, so we're going the right way now. 1.23, that is roughly where we want to be. That, that number that I came up with, 1.2, just a guess um, from experience. You know, uh, you don't want to go way down, you don't want to go way up, it's a small increment. You might want to just go, you know, 1.5 to 1.4 or something and try that first, but usually I've found that I need to go further. Okay, so now all we do is reassemble the drive, put it back in the Xbox and see if it reads a disc. If it doesn't read a disc, then we come back and we do it again. And there we go, our Xbox is back together. Now you may not want to put your Xbox, reassemble your Xbox completely, you might want to just have the drive sat. The cables give you enough play that you can just have the drive set up here and you can test it a couple of times and you can then remove it, make the adjustment again and put it back. By making this adjustment, you're decreasing the life of your laser anyway. Now it's already on the way out. We're just accelerating down the road to the eventual needing to replace that laser pickup. There's a couple of options. One, you can mod it. Modding it allows you to put a different uh, drive in it. Uh, you could uh, buy a new laser pickup to go in the CD drive. But the fact of the matter is, and this is why I kind of dislike retro CD-based systems, is they're all gonna die and it's getting, gonna get more and more difficult to uh, source parts. I mean, it's on its way out, 
Um, and that means that there's an ever decreasing amount of technology that could be used to replace this drive. Most people just mod their Xbox and then they install loads of, loads of ISO images on the hard drive and they play it from there. They put a big, big fat hard drive in it and use it as a media center. Really, what I don't know, I don't know if the if the Xbox is ever gonna like have the kind of cachet that the cartridge-based systems, and you know, Super Nintendos and Mega Drives and NESs and Mass Systems and you know, TurboGrafx-16s and all those have. I just don't know. I I just don't feel the same about CD-based consoles that I do about cartridges. I think cartridges are, you know, a much more collectible format. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's 16-Bit Bench. Uh, I hope this video is short enough and got to the point quick enough. And if it didn't, leave a comment or, uh, you know, hassle me on, on social media. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.